Welcome to The Real News. I'm Kim Brown in Baltimore. During the past week, protests took place throughout Mexico in reaction to a 20 percent price increase for gasoline. The protests have so far resulted in four deaths and the arrest of over 700 people. Also, over 300 stores are said to have been looted throughout the country. The gasoline price increase is part of a plan by President Enrique Peña Nieto to eliminate subsidies in the wake of the partial privatization of the country's oil industry. On Wednesday, President Peña Nieto vowed to continue with the price increases despite the protests. Well, joining us today from Mexico City to analyze the situation in Mexico, we're joined with John Ackerman. John is a professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He's also editor-in-chief of the Mexican Law Review and a columnist with both La Jornada newspaper and Procesco uh, magazine. John, thank you so much for being here. Uh, pleasure is always to be on The Real Network. Appreciate it, John. So, John, give us some background about these protests because people are said to be reacting to the price increase of gasoline. So is that all or is there more to this? Uh, no, this is not just about gas uh, or gas prices. Uh, this is uh, another uh, step in the collapse of the legitimacy of the ruling government, the ruling regime. Uh, we can compare it, I think, um, to the government of Carlos Andres Perez in Venezuela. About 25 years ago, beginning of the 90s, Carlos Andres Perez uh, came back for his second um, presidency, and one of his most important reforms was privatizing, uh, you know, more privatizing. They already had oil more private than it was in Mexico, but uh, um, deepening the privatization of oil in Venezuela. This led to a fiscal crisis of the state and led to a widespread a protest and the collapse of what used to be considered the most stable centralist uh, um, democracy in Latin America, in Venezuela, and we had a, a, a revolution, a peaceful revolution, which led to a new constitution, led to a new government, and um, this is the process we're in the we're in the middle of in Mexico. I don't, I'm not trying to say that you know we're going to have a, a Chavez coming in or Maduro or that Mexico is going to follow the path of, uh, of Venezuela for good or for bad, or however you want to look at it. Uh, but Mexico is going through a collapse of its uh, um, sitting government, and this is being expressed through the question of oil. When Enrique Peña Nieto came in in 2012, one of his most important policy programs was to privatize oil. As a result of this oil privatization, he promised that oil prices would come down and that Mexico would grow through increased uh, international investment. Well, this increase of 20% increase from one day to the next on New Year's Day of 2017 has finally convinced the Mexican people demonstrating this. This was all just a lie from the very beginning. Uh, they did, he did privatize the oil, but this was not for the benefit of Mexicans, but for the benefits of his friends and the big oil companies. Um, and so this is finally sinking in um, with the Mexican people. And that's what we're seeing with these protests explicitly against the um, gas hike, but in more generally against uh, um, authoritarianism and repression in Mexico. Well, John, then it begs the question, I mean, do you think that the situation could endanger the president's position? Because according to polls, his popularity was already at a historic low. Uh, yes, Enrique Peñito is the most despised, I would say, president we've had in Mexico in recent history. Uh, not even, you know, Carlos Salinas or Vicente Fox or Felipe Calderón, who also got very low in their public opinion um, ratings, um, did not get as low as Enrique Peña Nieto. Uh, Mexico had been, until Peña Nieto, an exception in Latin America. Uh, the Mexican people, although they saw there were serious problems with neoliberalism, repression, authoritarianism, in the end they kind of hoped uh, or uh, believed that the president was going to um, save them, that he was on their side of the people. Uh, but with Enrique Peña Nieto, this has changed. Uh, now Peña Nieto has approval ratings down in you know, 10, 15, 20 percent is the highest number I've seen in recent polls. Uh, and uh, he gave a, a state of, the, uh, of, you know, a national address on all the television channels yesterday at night. And he looked pretty tired, a pretty, uh, his, you could note it in his, in his face, you could note it in his expression. Uh, um, he himself seems to kind of want to uh, pack his bags. Um, he's still got another two years left, uh, which uh, could be too long for him. Uh, one of the good opportunities is that, you know, we do have uh, elections coming up next year in 2018, federal presidential elections, also for the National Congress, lots of state governments. Um, and so that could be an opportunity for uh, reviving politics and democracy in Mexico. 
So what is the situation like in Mexico at the moment? I mean, does it look like the protests will expand further or are they decreasing? Okay, well, let's see what's happening in Mexico today. There are really two uh, separate um, types of uh, protests or actions going on. Uh, on one hand, we have uh, peaceful uh, protests against the gas hikes and broader against Peña Nieto and against neoliberalism. Um, people are taking highways. They're, they're peaceful, but they are um, strong protests. They're closing off important highways, giving free passage through toll roads, uh, um, closing off, cordoning off uh, um, gas stations, which have, are now, have now been privatized, which are no longer, many of them, uh, of Pemex, the national corp company, but are now run by private corporations. Um, and, and so that's been happening pretty much peacefully, and it's been growing, particularly, of course, you know, taxi drivers, uh, um, uh, public transportation drivers uh, have been the ones who have been most active in this because they're the ones who are going to be hurt uh, um, the most. It's going to be hard for them to raise the prices for uh, uh, the people who are using public transport or taxing, but they're going to have to eat up that 20% increase directly in their income. Uh, on, that, on the other hand, there have been some violent actions. I would not call them protest actions. Uh, in fact, the information which I have, and many journalists have been looking for this, can, can see, is that uh, most, if not all, of these um, riots which have been leading to theft of <laughs> provoked by the government itself. Um, the, there are plenty of videos, for instance, we can see in which the police itself has um, been protecting these protesters, supposed protesters. Um, there are lots of reports of youth being hired by the police, being paid 800 pesos, 1,000 pesos in order to do rioting. Um, it looks like a concerted strategy by the regime itself to try to discredit the peaceful um, protests against the, the gas hike. So um, we need to be very clear about these two different manifestations. There's no evidence that any of the peaceful protests have then gone to, you know, take over or steal goods from these big supermarkets. These are two independent phenomenon, one being produced by the government itself, provocateurs, classic strategy of the Mexican government. In the other hand, um, uh, uh, authentically uh, angered citizens who are protesting against the gas hike. John, I know you said that these protests are not um, solely because of the 20% increase in the price of gasoline, though that seems to have been the catalyst. But it's kind of ironic that Mexico, uh, the government decided to enact these price hikes um, shortly after opening up some deep water tracks for deep oil exploration for the purpose of getting more gas and oil out of Mexican waters. I mean, these things seem to be relatively close together on the calendar, are they not? Right, exactly. I mean, this is the, 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 the this is why people are so angry, because Peña Nieto has been promising all along that the privatization of oil was going to lead to the reduction of prices. Uh, the problem is that this is just not the case. And as many of us knew from the very beginning, if you privatize the, the oil, you're going to get a, a fiscal crisis and what the government is now desperate to get money from any source possible uh, and it's one of the easiest ways as are these consumption taxes on oil and so they are trying to bring it in and in order to avoid a complete collapse of the government but by doing so they're angering even more the people so it's a vicious cycle which is really starting to bring this government down uh, uh, the, these new contracts for deep oil are private contracts um, in which uh, there's a big question about what percentage is actually going to get into the Mexican government's coffers and be able to be used for social services, for instance, um, because uh, because of the low price of oil, Mexico has been out. It has been forced to forced to sweeten these deals and um, turn them into, you know, uh, uh, a real uh, gifts for the international um, oil corporations. And so Mexico is getting a little, uh, less and less income out of oil and uh, the needs for you know, hospitals and, and schools are today more uh, just as important as ever been before. So we're getting this kind of crisis. That's why I'm, I compare this from the, from the top to the situation in, in, in Venezuela in the 90s or in Bolivia in the beginning of the, the, the 21st century. There, there are protests over access to water, for instance, um, which, of course, were not just about water, but it was about, in general, the privatization of public services. Uh, and Mexico up till now had been sort of an exception to this uh, um, social protest and this uh, um, political uh, move towards the left. We've been lost in neoliberalism forever, uh, seemingly. Um, but perhaps uh, Mexico might finally be uh, getting onto this uh, um, left-wing wave 
Uh, ironically, it, precisely at the moment in which you know the South American countries are shifting back to the right. Well, you have to explain to us like how other political sectors are reacting to the protests, particularly what is the reaction from the leader of the country's left, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, and his new political party, Morena. So in a recent article for the publication NACLA, uh, you suggested that Morena is enjoying a great boost in popularity already before these protests and lootings began. So how are these developments affecting him and his party? Yes, Lopez Obrador achieved in 2016 what uh, neither Bernie Sanders nor Pablo Iglesias from Podemos in Spain uh, achieved in 2016. Uh, Bernie, both uh, Podemos and Bernie Sanders did a great job, uh, but in the end, Bernie Sanders uh, you know, was uh, uh, campaigning for Hillary Clinton, and Podemos, in its second round in the parliamentary elections in Spain, uh, uh, actually reduced its voting, and the, the new president is the same old president, the right wing in, in Spain. Uh, while in 2016, what uh, Morena and López Obrador achieved uh, is to really uh, this uh, 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 overreach and get to go. I must be, I'm, I'm confusing Spanish. <laughs> Sorry about this, but the, commit the the the, the so um, desired um, sorpaso, which is when the new left uh, really just sort of goes by the old left. Uh, leaves the PRD, which is our old left, is our Democratic Party. It's the you know Socialist Party of of, of France um, has really been uh, left on the wayside, and Morena has really positioned itself as uh, really the number one um, contender for the 2018 elections. Uh, now, with these oil protests, uh, Lopes Obrador has uh, been supporting the protests, of course, has been uh, um, uh, the peaceful protests, and has called publicly for uh, the Congress, a special session of Congress, to revoke uh, the increase in the gas prices. Uh, Peña Nieto responded to that yesterday saying, no, we're going straight ahead. We're not going to change things. Uh, and so uh, this is a re rebuke to López Obrador, but it, in the end uh, demonstrates that López Obrador is the only one who um, really defends the, uh, uh, you know, the, the budget of the, of the people. And um, I think in the end this is going to strengthen López Obrador. One of the reasons why they've been uh, using all these provocateurs to create um, scenes of violence uh, is precisely to try to blame Morena and López Obrador for the violence and trying to uh, use this to uh, um, reduce his prestige. But uh, he's playing it, uh, I think, quite well, quite institutionally, um, uh, calling for peaceful protests and um, calling for the political organization of the Mexican people so as to change uh, the federal government in 2018. Indeed. Well, John, we certainly appreciate you giving us your, your expertise and updating us on the situation in Mexico. We hope to check in with you soon to find out how these uh, developments are continuing to progress. Thank you so much, Kim. Pleasure as always. All right. We've been joined with John Ackerman. He is a professor at the National Autonomous University of Mexico. He's also editor-in-chief of the Mexican Law Review, and you can check out his columns in both La Jornada newspaper and the Proceso magazine. John, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for watching The Real News Network.